Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his greatness. Tell the nations what he has done. Sing praise to the Lord. Tell of the wonderful things he has done. Be glad that we belong to him. Let all who worship him rejoice. Go to the Lord for help and worship him continually. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, you descendants of Jacob, the man he chose, remember the miracles that God performed and the judgments that he gave. So to read again. Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his greatness. Tell the nations what he has done. Sing praise to the Lord. Tell of the wonderful things he has done. Be glad that we belong to him. Let all who worship him rejoice. Go to the Lord for help and worship him continually. <coughs> With these words from Psalm 105, I welcome you to today's service as we come to give thanks to the Lord for all he is and all that he has done for us. Let us turn to God in prayer. Father, we adore you. We lay our lives before you. Oh, how we love you. When we reflect on all that you mean to us as a heavenly parent, loving us through all things, providing for us in all things, guiding us through all things. We give thanks to you, Lord, for your greatness. Jesus, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. Oh, how we love you. When we reflect on all that you mean to us, Jesus, we are, are so grateful for the way you made yourself known to us, for revealing the Father to us, for gifting the Spirit to us. We thank you for understanding our situation by being with us in it. We thank you for saving us from all those things that bind us, that belittle us, that destroy us. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are to us. We give thanks to you, Lord, for your greatness. Holy Spirit, we adore you. We lay our lives before you. Oh, how we love you. When we reflect on all that you mean to us in making us aware of our need and also making us aware of where we can find the Father and the Son. Thank you, Spirit, for opening up the word to us. Thank you, Spirit, for leading us in the way in which we go. Thank you, Spirit, for giving us the strength that we need 
to live the lives you have called us to live. Thank you for working in us. We are so grateful for who you are. So Father, Son and Spirit, we adore you. We lay our lives before you. Oh, how we love you. Would you meet with us in ways that bring life not just into our individual lives, but into our world. We ask this all in Jesus' name, as we pray the prayer with Jesus that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will listen to the scriptures now. Zina will read for us from the Old Testament and the Gospel. Um, I will read from Romans during my message. Um, so listen to the book uh, reading from uh, Exodus first. Thank you. My first reading is from Exodus 3, from verse 1 to verse 15. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses. Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals. For you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. 
when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent you, has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. And my next reading is from Matthew 16, verse 21 to 28. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Get behind me. I want to focus today on these words that Jesus spoke to Peter. Get behind me. It is interesting in that as we read through the account, how quickly Peter would turn from Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven, you are a rock. On this rock I will build my church. To Peter, you are a stumbling block to me. 
from the rock on which to build to a stone which to fall over. It is interesting how quickly Peter turns from the one who becomes the mouthpiece for God, who, who says what has been revealed by the Father, to being a mouthpiece of the devil, of Satan. It is interesting to see how Peter becomes one who is to be praised, rather, and one whom to whom is rebuked. Get behind me. Get behind me. What is hidden to us in translation is that this phrase that Jesus used, get behind me, was used many times throughout the, the, the gospel. It was not the first time Peter heard these words. The first time Peter heard these words was right in the beginning where Jesus said to him, get behind me, I will make you fishers of men. It's exactly the same phrase that was translated, follow me. Get behind me and follow me are the same concept. And Jesus would often say to, to people, get behind me. Or sometimes it's translated, follow me. Get behind me. And so today I want to speak about getting behind Jesus and all that that could mean for us as we reflect on our scripture passages today. Get behind me. Get behind me in terms of following the lead of Jesus. Get behind me in terms of Copying the way of Jesus. Get behind me in terms of embracing the victory of Jesus. So firstly then, get behind me as following the lead of Jesus. Following the lead of God. When Peter first heard Jesus say to him, get behind me. And he started following Jesus, going where Jesus went. When Moses sees this strange sight of this burning bush, that is not being consumed and draws aside to listen, to be there and find out where this would lead. It is something that happens for all of us in that some or other way God gets our attention and he tells us, I want you to follow me. I want you to get behind me. I want you to come with me. This coming with Jesus, this coming with God, is always a coming with to do God's work, to do God's mission. Come with me. Let's set the people free. Come with me. Let's catch people for God's kingdom. Come with me. And be there as we transform this world. Come with me. It is an invitation not only to be with Jesus, but to be in the mission of Jesus for the world. Get behind me. Get behind what I am doing. 
Now it comes from time to time that as we get behind Jesus, that we step out of place and we we have the audacity to tell Jesus I don't think that's the way you should go I think this is the way we should go and that's exactly what Peter did after Jesus had explained to him what it meant for him to be the Messiah and Peter said no way Lord it cannot be that way but Peter stepped from behind Jesus to trying to be in front of Jesus, trying to let Jesus do things in the direction that Peter felt Jesus should go. Earning him that rebuke, get behind me, Satan. Earning him the rebuke that said, just know your place. Get behind me. Get behind who I am. Get behind what I am doing in this world. Follow me. Don't try to lead me. Moses was also a person that followed the ways of God. God led him to set the people free. But sometimes Moses too would step out from following, from being behind God, to try and be in front of God, say, telling God how to do things, where to go, what to do. Earning Moses sometimes also a rebuke from God. We too, from time to time, need this rebuke. For sometimes we who once followed Jesus and the way of Jesus, Try to tell Jesus how, when he should do, where he should do things. We try to, to guide Jesus instead of being guided by Jesus. Get behind me is therefore not just a phrase that we learn once and do once, but something that we need to come back to from time to time. We have gotten behind Jesus when we first heard his call. But sometimes we need to be reminded, let's get behind Jesus every step of the way. Let him lead us. Let God be our guide. Let we not be God's guide. Get behind me. Secondly, getting behind Jesus as getting behind the way he does things. The way that Jesus has to accomplish his mission is the way of love. The way of caring more for others than caring for himself. The way of being willing to give up his own comforts, his own, um, his own safety even, for love of the people to whom he was ministering. When Jesus made this known to Peter and the disciples, that I will go to Jerusalem and I will suffer death. I will suffer. He was explaining that his way is the way of the cross, the way of loving more others than loving of self. It is a way that I think is very well described in our Romans reading for today. Listen to these words from Romans chapter 12. Love must be completely sincere. 
hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another warmly as Christian brothers and sisters, and be eager to show respect for one another. Work hard and do not be lazy. Serve the Lord with a heart full of devotion. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles. Pray at all times. Share your belongings with the needy fellow Christians and open your homes to strangers. Ask God to bless those who persecute you. Yes, ask him to bless, not to curse. Be happy with those who are happy. Weep with those who weep. Have the same concern for everyone. Do not be proud, but accept humble duties. Do not think of yourselves as wise. If someone has done you wrong, do not repay them with the wrong. Try to do what everyone considers to be good. Do everything possible on your part to live at peace with everybody. Never take revenge, my friends, but instead let God's anger do it. For the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay back, says the Lord. Indeed, instead, sorry, as the scripture says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. For by doing this, you make them burn with shame. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. Jesus very well illustrated this way of living. And Jesus says to his followers, get behind me. Love as I love. Care for people as I care for people. Get behind me. Get behind doing things the way that I am doing things. And so getting behind Jesus is not just going where he leads, but also doing as he does. Getting behind God is doing things God's way, not our way. And that's what we do when we, when we follow Jesus. But sometimes as we follow along, we come to a time when we see a shortcut. We come to a time when we see an easier way. And we have the, the audacity to say to Jesus, don't do it your way, do it my way. And that's exactly what Peter did, earning him the rebuke, get behind me, Satan. Jesus was not saying to Peter, I'm rejecting you. He was saying to Jesus, Peter, let my way be your way too. Get behind me. Don't do things the shortcut way. Don't do things the easy way. Do things the love way. And the love way is always the way of giving of oneself for the others. The way of the cross, it is called. To love as Jesus loves is to love in such a way that we put self-interest aside for the sake of those that we love. This is what we are called to get behind. Get behind this way of living that is not for self, but for love of others. Get behind me. Get behind me in doing the things that I lead you to do, says Jesus.
Thirdly, get behind me is getting behind the, the victory of Jesus. When we first decided to follow Jesus, when we first decided to do things Jesus' way, we did it because we accepted the promise that this is what will give us life. Life in all its fullness. We accepted the fact that this is the way for us who are weary and tired and just burdened to find rest. We did it because we believed that this is the way to freedom, the way out of the bondages of the past to a life of, of freedom. When Jesus calls us to get behind him, he's not only asking us to get behind the way he leads, he's not only asking us to get behind the things he does, he's asking us to get behind his victory, his resurrection. He wants us to taste life in all its fullness. And that's why we would follow. We want to know this life. We want to know this peace. We want to know this rest. We want to know the victory over the forces of this world that Jesus provides. It's why Moses went to make God known to the people of Israel. It is why Peter and the other disciples followed Jesus because he had the words of life. It is why we come to God. But sometimes as we follow this way, as we get behind this, sometimes it feels as if this is not what we signed up for. Sometimes it feels as if this is hard work. Sometimes it feels as this is unsafe. As if this isn't life, but potential death. Sometimes it feels and sounds to us that we were misled. May it never be like this, Lord. May it never be that you should suffer anyway. May it never be that we should suffer in any way. May it never be that there should be any difficulties at all in this world. It's sometimes the way we feel. And when we feel that we earn Jesus' rebuke, get behind me. Get behind me. Know that there is no way to resurrection that bypasses the cross. Know that there is no way to life in all its fullness than the way of taking the time that's needed and going through the struggles that are needed for it. We have this desire sometimes for reaching our victory without the battle, of reaching our, our goal without the effort required of taking the easy way, the shortcut. Jesus is saying that any victory that is won with shortcuts, any victory that is won the easy way will be a hollow victory. 
will be a victory that will not last very long. Whereas the words that Jesus gives us, the getting behind Jesus' victory is a victory that will last for all eternity. So when we are going through these times of struggle, when we are going through these times of difficulty, when it is, when it is not convenient, we need to then get behind Jesus. Because we getting behind Jesus means not only participating in the cross, but also means participating in the resurrection. Jesus calls us equally to take up the cross and take up the resurrection. For without the cross, there is no resurrection. Follow Jesus. Get behind him. Know that his victory is for us all. But it is not a cheap victory. It's not an easy victory. It's a victory that is won by going through the difficult times. Get behind me. Get behind me, says Jesus. Follow my lead. Don't try and lead me. Get behind me, says Jesus. Follow my ways. Don't think your ways are better than my ways. Get behind me, says Jesus. Experience my victory. Don't try and make the victory your own. Get behind. Let's get behind Jesus. Amen. Once again, to thank you all for joining us today. It has been good to, to be with you. Um, again, I want to just say that um, if you'd like to just let us know that you were watching or that you are participating by doing the like button or comment if you'd like. Um, it is always important for us to know that people are, are with us. Um, thank you very much. We, we will be back next week. Um, I'll also be, be here tonight um, doing a service on the John Wesley um, series. I'm doing a series on the preaching of John Wesley. And tonight's um, the second message um, entitled The Almost Christian. Uh, interesting sermon by, by John Wesley. That's at six o'clock tonight. This coming week we will be doing communion here um, in small groups from Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. Um, people are welcome to come and participate in that um, on a half an hour between nine o'clock and twelve o'clock. Let us come uh, in closing to God in prayer. Lord, we want to come behind you. We do not want to be a stumbling block to your mission in the world. We do not want to be a distraction for the way in which you lead. We do not want to gain temporary victories at the cost of gaining your eternal victory. We get behind you in everything. As we go into the world, we go in the knowledge that we go behind you. You go before us. When we go and see those people that we know of that are not well, 
you go before us. When we go into situations where we want to, to challenge the authorities, you go before us. When we go into those places where there is deep suffering and deep sadness, you go before us. We get behind your work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.